Welcome to the Mouthpiece. Today we're going to talk about the Foxwoods Tournament, in which I got f***ed. We're going to talk about uh, my book, my up-and-coming book set to release here within a couple weeks. We're going to talk about the World Poker Tour Championship, which starts Saturday. We're going to talk about some crazy f hands I watch Gus play online. And we're going to talk about my hand of the week and anything else you want to talk about coming up next. Welcome back to the mouthpiece, and I want to apologize for missing last week as I was not feeling very good. Uh, had a really rough uh, day, and uh, I just couldn't quite make it down here, and I apologize. Uh, I've been back for about a week from, from Foxwoods, and as you know, I finished 38th, and they played 30 spots. Uh, it was a very disappointing finish for what I thought was two and a half days of phenomenal poker play on my part. Uh, I never really was able to get a hold of many chips. I grinded, I grinded, I grinded, I grinded. I, I finally got it up to about 123,000 on day three when average was 130. I uh, made a big blunder for about 40,000, uh, but was able to have a table I was really, really able to control. Uh, I was able to take some blinds and annies and build myself up uh, and stay around 80, 90,000 for the next two or three hours. Um, and the way I went broke was uh, was pretty pretty amazing. Uh, it, it, I consider it uh, one of uh, the worst beats I've taken. And it's not that I took a beat; it's the way the hand went down. And uh, for all of you out there that doesn't know how I went broke at Foxwoods, um, I raised. We we're playing fifteen hundred and three thousand, and I was sitting with um, approximately seventy three thousand in chips at the time, uh, which uh, nine thousand around. I have. You know, eight rounds of chips. I'm, I'm still plenty deep, even though average was about 140. Um, and I made it 9,000. And uh, Charlie Mar Marchese, who was the guy that I dumped off uh, 750,000 to in chips at Foxwoods in November when I had the tens and he had kings, and I knew I, and I had a big blow up in that hand, uh, re raised me to 25,000. And I, and I had, I looked down, you know, I had the two tens again. And I said to myself, the way he re-raised me this time, I knew he didn't have the big pair. Where the last time, I, I, I thought he probably did. And I said to myself, I, I was playing really good. That I said to myself, he's got ace-queen for sure. Uh, let's call 17,000 more and see what the flop comes. If it comes no ace, no queen, I'm just going to ship it. And as, as it turns out, I called 17,000. Flop come deuce, eight, nine, uh, rainbow. And I shipped it 48,000 more. Um, and... He had only about 20,000 more than that, and he snap called me, and uh, he turned over ace coin. So my, my read was perfect, my stop and go was perfect, and the guy behind me told me he folded ace coin when I raised <laughs> pre flop. So uh, I got four outed, uh, which was uh, made me 10 to 1 favorite for what would have put me above average in the tournament, and I was at a table that I was able to control. And uh, I was for sure probably going to make the final table if I didn't take that beat. But it wasn't the beat that, that losing to Ace on the turn. It was the fact that what does Charlie possibly think that I'm calling thir over 33% of my stack, okay, and then shipping with on the flop? I mean, does he think I'm randomly calling with two random napkins and then shoving it on the flop? I mean, am I calling him with 10 jack for a third of my chips? Am I calling him with ace jack? No. There's no two, no way I don't have a pair. Impossible. And uh, his answer was, when he called, was, well, I put 25000 in. I was going to see all five cards for another forty eight. Well, that's fine if, if you had another 100000 behind, even though it still wouldn't have been fine. Um, he, I mean, he's got like 20000 23000 left after he calls. Congratulations, Charlie, on a good call. You know, you get rewarded for my bad play in November, and uh, you get rewarded for your bad play this time. And that's why I got knocked out of the Foxwood Sermon. So, that's what happened there. Um, I came home, and um, things have been uh, kind of hectic. Um, the book is done. It'll be out uh, May 12th. Uh, check Raising the Devil. You can pre-order on AmazonBooks.com. Uh, you'll be able to go to all Barnes and Nobles. We'll be on the front shelves of Barnes and Nobles. We're having we're going to be having big promotions about my book at Full Tilt Poker. Uh, so you'll be able to 
to, to win copies of the books. You'll be able to buy copies of the books with Full Tilt player points. Um, Full Tilt uh, uh, is going to be running a really nice promotion for me with that. Um, that'll probably be starting on the 1st. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the book. It's really going to be great. Um, and uh, with that in mind, I, I started playing some internet poker uh, again. And uh, yesterday I had a really nice win. I played Potlum in Omaha for 13 hours. And I've never really played much Potlum in Omaha. Uh, because uh, every time I played, I always ran terrible. But uh, on this certain day, I ran uh, 5,000 and 60,000 profit. Uh, I grew a great feel for the game. Um, I thought I played fantastic. And if I would have ran a little bit better, I might have won 100. Uh, the deck hit me pretty good, I, I, but I played well. I kept, put my money in where I was always at least 2-1 to one favorite. And um, I learned a lot about the game yesterday, and it was, uh, it was good for me. And uh, it was good to, to know that there was a couple good spots in the game that was given action that helped too. So um, I booked my biggest win on full tilt for a quarter 50 limit game that I can remember, maybe ever, three years for sure. And um, that felt really, really good. So I'm going into the WPT Championship with a lot of confidence. Uh, I feel good. I'm going to be playing Saturday. Uh, I, I think that uh, I'm going to do something big in this tournament. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to win. But uh, I, I've got my confidence, which is always good. I've got the power of positive thinking. Uh, when things got a little bit rough, I started reading my books again and making sure I'm getting positive and and I, I really think that uh, I'm going to do some good things. So um, I'm looking forward to the uh, the big tournament coming up this week. Uh, I almost won it in the second year, and uh, I got real unlucky not to. And uh, we'll see what happens. You know, it's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. It's the best players in the world, and um, it, it'd be nice to, to to make a deep run into it. And I ex well, I expect to make a deep run. And if it's a deep stack tournament and I play well, I'll make a deep run. The only reason why I didn't cash in Foxwoods is a guy's got to be a complete moron because it was impossible for me not to cash. And in case any of you out there have not been watching, I've been kind of watching the big games over at Full Tilt the last couple days. And I have one thing to say to my good friend Gus. Have you lost your f***ing mind? I mean, you are really on crack or something because I don't understand why you are playing so poorly. But you are. You need to reevaluate your game and reevaluate what you're doing or like jump because I watched you play a hand yesterday where you put 33,000 in and, and blindfolded I would have lost seven in the pot. I don't know what you're thinking uh, on whether you're tilting or going crazy but Gus please I love you please get your together or quit playing. Uh, as far as um, Anything else, uh, that's pretty much what I've been watching is a lot of these head-up matches where Gus is completely insane. Uh, and uh, I really haven't really watched much of that. Uh, that's about it. Oh, my hand of the week comes to you by Full Tilt Poker. That's my sponsor, FullTiltPoker.com. It comes on one of the very few hands I lost yesterday in which I raised it up with the... Actually, I didn't even raise it up. I limped on the button behind another limper with the 9-10-10 jack. The flop, uh, the two blinds take the flop, and four of us take the flop, and the flop comes 10-8-5 with two diamonds, which I flop top set and open and straight draw. Guy bets out. I raise the pot. Fold, fold. He re-raises the pot. I re-raise the pot. He re-raises the pot, and we get 5,000 in. And lo and behold, his hand is 5-5, five, five, jack, jack. He has one 5 and one jack in the deck to hit. He rolled a 5 on the turn, and I lost a $10,000 pot with tenths full, two quads. That is my hand of the week. That was my bad beat hand yesterday. I had actually quite a few bad beats yesterday. I mean, winning 60000 and probably really should have won a hundred. But that's the one I remember the most. Congratulations for getting your money in dead and escaping. Okay, this is my favorite part of the show. Let's uh, light up the phones and uh, take some phone calls. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Mike. Hey, Mike. What's up, man? What up, man? Who's this? Hey, I 
I actually called you a couple of weeks ago. You gave me some really good advice about uh, Omaha High Low Heads Up game. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember you. But uh, I actually had a, an interesting question for you for me. I mean, uh, I had a situation come up in the hand I, I wanted to ask you about. I definitely wanted your opinion, even though I think I kind of know what you're going to say. But um, I'm not, not, you know, like I definitely want your perspective on this. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, I actually live here in Las Vegas, and um, about two weeks ago I made a final table at one of their little deep stack things that they had. Mm -hmm. So um, I made the final table. I was like, uh, I think I was, out of the nine players, I was seventh in chips. With, in what, uh, what game? It was just hold them, no limit. Okay. And um, it'll take me a second to set up the hand just because I want to give you a good feel for the situation. Um, but so I had 230,000 to start. The blinds were 8,000, 16,000 okay. with a uh, 4,000 ante. The chip mm -hmm. leader had approximately 700,000, and uh, the short stack had approximately 180. Okay. So, so you, got 10 you got 10 rounds of chips. Ten, uh, is that what that is? 10 rounds? You had 280, it's 28,000 around about? Yeah. Oh. Well, I had 2.30, so... Oh, whatever, okay. So you had um, nine rounds, okay. Hit nine, nine rounds of chips. Whatever, go ahead. So I, I made up my mind going in. I mean, I had a good table image. I knew that uh, the table was very aggressive. A lot of young internet players that were pretty fearless. I knew that uh, at least one of the guys had made a WPT final table. So um, it, it definitely was a tough table. So I knew coming in, my, my basic, I, I kind of had like an idea of what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to get caught raising a position, trying to steal blinds, even though I needed them. Mm -hmm. So I was a little more comfortable raising in, in middle position just because I knew that I wouldn't get played back at unless somebody had a hand. So um, basically the first hand, it, was, it went like raised by the button and shoved by the big blind. Then um, next hand I'm on the button, it goes raised by the chip leader again. And then... Uh, shoved by the big blind again and this time it's a call from the chip leader the raise was to uh 45,000 and the all-in was for approximately 250,000 and the chip leader called with ace eight and the, sh the original razor had the queen jack so the chip leader ended up taking out the uh short stack there or uh well one of the short stacks at the time so uh, immediately, I knew that the game was going to be very aggressive, and I knew. Well, that it was pretty I mean, obviously uh -huh. that you were playing with really bad players because the chip leader, who called with ace eight, there is a very bad player, and the guy who shoved with queen jack is a very bad player. So, yeah, um, at least his shove wasn't that bad, as bad as the call was. But you have to be aware of who's going to call and who's not going to call. Um, and if he's been playing with the guy long enough, he obviously knows the guy who's not going to fold. So. I kind of had that, that feel in Foxwoods um, where I was playing with some real aggressive players and and uh, even the guy who won the tournament, uh, 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 Trencher, he, you could re-raise no matter how much you re-raise, he never folds. So, yeah. you, it, you know, you're in a spot where he's raising every hand and you can never re-raise or do anything. So you're, you're almost like tied to the deck. Um, and uh, I never got dealt anything behind him, but... Um, in a spot like that, I, I like to uh, to not open that many pots when you have a lot of aggressive players. I let them open the pots, and uh, and then I, I look to uh, to find a situation to where to where I'll uh, if I blind down to like one seventy five, and now they open for like thirty thousand, I'll, I'll make a play at them uh, in the right spot uh, because when you're opening a lot of spots, they're going to come come at you like over the top of you a lot and. And uh, there's times to open, and there's times to just pick your spots to come over the top. And uh, you got to just figure out what your table image is and what their table image is. So. Yeah, I guess, uh, well, more specifically, my question was, um, I got down to basically what happened. I think I was in the hijack, and I picked up uh, ace jack of diamonds, and it folded to me. Mm -hmm. And I knew that um, based on the way the table had been playing, I mean, there were five hands in, and every hand has been raised and re-raised. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I know as I look down at my hand and I go to raise that there's a very good chance that I'm going to get re-raised re weak based on the way the table is playing. What you have to decide right there is uh, if you're going with the hand or not, if you get re-raised, that's all. Yeah. And, um, you, uh, me, before, whenever I raise in the cutoff or button seat, I'm, I'm always looking out the corner of my eye. I'm looking to see how they react, how they've already reacted to their hand. 
So before I even make a decision, I, I, I already know whether they're, whether they're strong or not. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that uh, people don't do. I, I mean, it is one of the, big, the biggest problems. Everybody thinks just come over the top, come this. You don't come over the top of somebody at, in, in just out of thin air. You know, you don't make, uh, you, you come over the top of somebody when you sense weakness. You know, you don't mm -hmm. just sit there and, and most people, all these young kids, they just, and they get away with it on the internet because they can't, the other people can't see them. You know, but uh, you got you, you can't just have balls and come over the top of somebody unless you see weakness because uh, it's real important. So that's why uh, whenever I enter a pot, uh, I'm always looking for the aggressive players and whether I see weakness or not. And that's why uh, a lot of people fear me because they know I read weakness and strength very well. Yeah, well, see that, and that's why I figured. I, my, I guess my question too is that um, the the guy on the button uh, basically he re-raised enough to put me all in and um i kind of did just like you said I, I made it my mind pretty much before i made the well, how was he, how, was, how was how was he playing well that was the problem is that we were i hadn't played with him previously um i knew that he was a good player based on um the See, five I, hands it sound, that i played it sound, with him it sounds to me just to by what you're describing is see most people don't go small hijack button all in uh unless they got a I'm going to go ahead and say that that he moved in on you with, uh, I don't know, two tens? See, and that's what I was originally thinking was is maybe like something that he thought he could, almost well, like a semi-bluff. I, mean, like, I don't think it was a semi-bluff. It's just I think he had a hand he was going with. He was either going to go with, like, he either had, like, I don't think he had, like, ace-king. Um, I think yeah. he, I, I just feel like the, the way for him to move in on you after you haven't been playing many pots, that he's got, like, probably tens or jacks. And, uh... Uh, I would probably, I would probably fold it. But yeah, see, and that's, I figured that you, I mean, it seems like the right, I mean, after I call, I ended up basically calling, he had queens, but. Queens, yeah. Uh, see, I, was, I even said, I knew it wasn't no ace queen or ace king just by the way you told me how he moved in. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's the thing about making the call there is, is, is you, you're, you're up against a, a big pair. I mean, you're up against tens, jacks, queens. I mean, it's, it's just, it just, it just has to be just by the way you told me he moved in. Uh, now that that also comes from experience and 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 and, and uh, just by what you told the way the table was playing. So, you know, uh, it's not the worst of things. You could have uh, you could have yeah. you could have had you could have hit an ace and ace jack suit is like what two two to one dog. I mean, they beat me two to one dog all the time. So, whatever. I guess I was just afraid of getting like. I mean, I didn't think that I was going to get run over coming in, and then watching the way they played, I felt like if I folded there, the greatest thing in the world, going to be labeled. The, the greatest thing in the world in, in in poker is everybody thinks they're always getting run over, and that's why I sit there and make all the final tables because they because yeah. I don't run over people. I give them the illusion that I might be, but I never do. All listen, all them young kids that try and raise tons and tons of pots and 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 be super duper aggressive. Yeah, they'll win it. They'll win a tournament here or there. But where will they be in 15 years? You gotta play solid poker, and you gotta play position poker, and you gotta pick your spots, and you gotta play poker. You can't play aggression. Aggression can only win you, can win you a tournament here or there, but aggression can never make you a superstar. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely understand where you're coming from, and especially in this day and age when nobody folds. Yeah. And well, and that, that was my other point, was that I knew if I if I did lay down there, by the time I went through the blinds, assuming that I don't pick up a premium hand... Um, well, I don't know. I, I mean, you have, two, you have 230, you, you open for 28,000. Uh, the blinds were the blinds were 8 and 16, I opened for 48. All right, well, I would have opened for about 40. And then... Uh, yeah. And then a uh, guy moves in, I fall, I got 190. It's still, thir it's still only 30,000 around. I go around another time 160, another round 130. Now somebody opens for 40. I ship it for 130 with a six seven suited for 90 more. And the guy goes in the tank and he realizes you haven't played a hand. And he folds. And you go back up. Yeah. You build your stip stack and you just pick your spots and that's it. That's that's definitely what I should have done in hindsight. And poke, you know, poker. No, like no I'm not gonna lie to you. Poke. No limit holdems again is an art. It's a game of picking your spots. It's not a game of seeing who could take a fucking flop and and who's got and who can get lucky, and uh, that's the bottom line. But hey, I got another yeah. call, and I uh, appreciate the All call. All right, well, thank you for the advice, Mike. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care.
right, thank you. Welcome to the mouthpiece, it's Mike. Yo, it's Brian. What's up, brother? What's going on, sir? Uh, just hanging out and talking about uh, winning on full tilt and talking about uh, what the f talking about uh, lucky, money? lucky money, talking about what we're gonna do this weekend. Maybe. Oh my God, it's gonna be so easy. It's gonna be so easy. It is. It's gonna be so easy. It's always easy. It's always easy. Then I get down to like the last two, three tables, and I pick up the ten deuce offsuit every man. But not this time. This time it'll be no, easy. Lucky money, you're gonna have like eighty percent of the chips. It's just gonna be like. Yeah, I agree. No, I no, I agree, hundred percent. So what's going I'm gonna on? Gonna ask you to not, you know, win every pot so they can produce a TV show. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, exactly. Dude, that's exactly what's going to happen. Wow. Dude, I like it's you already. A, it's a World Poker Tour event, right? Yeah, a World Poker Tour. They're going to have, it's going to be You know a what? World... I hope you win the final table in like 10 minutes because I lost like 50000 in their stock. You lost like 50000 in their stock? Yeah, their stock's yeah. worth about three cents on the dollar, if that. Yeah. You know, but they, 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 they did that to themselves. I mean, they, they greed, the typical greed of, of a company. Um... They weren't happy that all the uh, all the internet companies were sponsoring them and, and running their events. They had to try and compete with the internet companies and open up their own internet site. And uh, and everybody. Why uh, did they just open up an online poker site like Party Poker? Or well, that's what they did. Just... They did. They opened up an online poker site overseas, and all the people that were that were all their their sponsors pulled out and said, F "You, and we're not." And like Aruba uh, Ultimate Bet pulled out, and Party Poker pulled out, and and full tilt at the time pulled out. Everybody that was sponsoring them pulled out, and uh, they were getting a lot of sponsorship money from them, and uh, and uh, they were really pissed off that they were trying to compete with them and run a competitive site with them, and you know, and uh, they they made a mistake. Now, if they were gonna, they would have uh, opened World Poker Tour uh, right away with with the with the TV show. Maybe it, it would have worked, you know, but yeah. You, know. you should be in charge. Yeah. All right, Brian. I appreciate the call, man. You got any questions for me All today? Right. I'll talk to you later. Good you luck. You got it. Show. Take it later. For anybody out there, that was my friend Brian. Uh, he actually uh, sent me five thousand online at full tilt yesterday because I was waiting to get some money, and I that's when I ran that five thousand into like sixty. So that's why we call it lucky money. And uh, it was such lucky money that I sold him a small piece in the World Poker Tour this week for four uh, percent. So we're we're, we're uh, kind of joking around, saying it'll, it'll be over by before the final table. So lucky money, hopefully, will get me to the final table. So he's a nice guy, and I hopefully I can make him 160 grand. Be nice. So that's what uh, that was all about. Welcome to the mouthpiece. What up, Mikey? Yes, sir. How are you? Who are you? I am Reed from Canada. Reed from Canada. I'm doing good, Reed. What's going on? Oh, not much. Just uh, finally got through to the mouthpiece. Good. And uh, decided to give you a call. I appreciate it, man. What's been up? Um, uh, just wondering, Mikey, if uh, I'd be able to throw some names at you and you just give me um, your opinion, whether in poker or personal or whatever you want. All right. Okay. Is that okay? Possibly. Go ahead. Okay. Negreanu. Not sure. <laughs> Reads well, but never folds. Calls the guy's hand every day and calls anyway. Uh, markets himself well. Um, I don't know. I used to consider him one of my good friends, but uh, I'm not quite sure anymore. Go ahead. Antonius. He's a really good player. Uh, I play with him like two or three. I don't, I, I don't like his mixed game, but as far as like PLO and No Limit, I played with him twice. I, I thought he just played fantastic. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, he doesn't talk very much, so it's another wet noodle. Part of team, team, they should call it, instead of full tilt, they should call it team wet noodle. Go ahead. I agree. We we need more talkers there. Uh, go ahead. Next. Doyle. Uh, 
Do me and Doyle are friends, and I'm friends with Todd, and I know him well. I really never played much with him. Uh, I know he, he grinds all the time and still goes down and plays the big game and still loves to play. And um, he seems like he plays real solid and tight, and which is the way you're supposed to play, and just tries to get his money in good. Okay. And last one, Lane Flack. Uh, Lane is uh, an idiot. Um, Lane is uh, my friend. But he's really nobody's friend. Um, Lane cares about Lane, and Lane cares about wanting to impress everybody. And Lane needs to learn to care more about himself and other people. And maybe Lane would be okay, you know. But um, I, uh, I consider Lane a person that I care about in ways, and yet I look at him and just say, you're a f complete idiot. So, you know, uh, we had a long talk a couple weeks ago, and he came up to me and he told I said, I heard you, you said I was a piece of or whatever. I said, yeah. I said, you know, I don't deny it. I, said, I didn't like the fact that he was hanging around Russ Hamilton, and, uh, and I said something about it. So, but me and Lane are on good terms, and uh, I just wish Lane would just quit drinking completely and put his head down and and grind and try and make something of himself, and uh, and I think Lane would be okay. But that's about it. Okay, perfect. One more. I just want to sneak one more. Hmm. Jimmy Fricky. Don't know him. Seems like a nice guy. Every time he's come up to me, he's always said hello. He's always been nice. Thanks, Mike. Look forward to your university coming out. I'll be getting on your training site for sure. Oh yeah, that's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be real soon too, and it's going to be big. It's going to be real big. We got uh, nationwide. Uh, Multimedia, um, uh, everything's going to be a lot of infomercials, a lot of everything. So, looking forward to it. Perfect. Thanks a lot, dude. Later. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. This is Robert from Austin. Robert, what's going on, buddy? Hey, man. Um, I was just calling to ask you two quick questions. Sure. Um, I had a question about, um, okay, so I play poker a lot. Um, I play online. I play live. And I was wondering just kind of tips that you had to, to help me from keeping poker from like becoming an addiction and just kind of playing too much. How do you keep it from becoming an addiction? Wow, that's a mm -hmm. great question. Uh, since I'm a f complete degen. Um, yeah, I'm, the, the, I'm, a, I'm a pretty competitive person and pretty here, 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 pretty here's addiction. What, it, here's what makes it a, what, 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 what you need to do. And, and I'm, I'm really learning this a lot. Is you need to separate when you're playing and you need to set a schedule for yourself. In other words, okay, I'm going to play to this time or whatever. I don't care how good the game is because the games are good. The game's going to be there the, when you wake up the next day anyhow. So, right. And you need to find some kind of hobby to do, whether it's golf for two hours a day, whether it's go see a movie, go to dinner. And try. I, I, I just think that try and put in no more than 10 hours a day. Now, it's coming from somebody that plays like 18 hours a day, 24 hours a day. I mean, I'm sick, right. you know. And but I, I, you know, I have this, this dry, you know. I'm one of maybe three or four poker players in the world that don't ever need to play again, yet I play all the time for... Because you like it. I like the competitiveness, and I get bored. I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what, do I, what am I going to do? You know, I can't, I don't know what... Honestly, I, I don't. I know Daniel played a lot of the scoops, but I mean, what do you do in between? Uh, what is uh, like Helmuth and Daniel and all these guys that were uh, like Ferguson? What do they do all day to keep themselves busy? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I know Daniel golfs, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, what, what what do you? I mean, to me, I need action, you know. So I yeah. I'm always playing, you know, but there's so many of the, the, the people that, you, 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 you know, you, you, I'm one of the very few. I, I put me, Chow Gianji, uh, and, um, and uh, uh, Phil Ivey in the category of, of people that just love to play, that don't need to play, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think uh, for me, I think, I think I just started working out recently. I think just kind of a scheduled thing. Yeah, working out's uh, great too. I, I, I think just, working out helps me not only not only with poker, but I think with sleep and uh, just you know. It's every, working out's also. everything, buddy. I, I mean, I just I, I was really struggling mentally again, and I was severely depressed like th three days ago, four days ago, and I called my mm -hmm. trainer up. I said, "Listen, I got to get back to working out every day." I'm like, "I want to work out every day from here to the World Series." 
you know, like mm -hmm. we like we did last year where I got in that great mindset and had that great World Series. And then I worked out uh, uh, like the last three days and uh, yesterday I felt great. I won. I had my biggest win online that I've had in like three years. So, uh, awesome. and, I, and I was like seeing through the cards. So I, and I wasn't depressed at all. And uh, even though I've had a rough day today mentally, I think it's because of the lack of sleep that I've had because I've played a lot of hours. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, you know, just get back to eating good uh, and, and working out. I think eating good and working out is essential. I think, you know, uh, so I had my girlfriend go out. She brought me protein shakes. I'm going to just start taking my protein shakes. I'm going to eat my sushi at nighttime. I'm going to eat my, you know, my, 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 my grilled chicken. And I'm going to run my four miles a day every day and see what happens. Working out is, uh, God, I... I I don't understand. I think I, I, I think I play better after I work out. I don't know, but you play like, bad like after you work out. I, I, I think I play better after I work out. Well, of course, you play better after you work out. Your mind is so much sharper and clearer. I mean, yeah. you, you feel. I worked out. I won yesterday like twenty-two thousand before my wow. my my uh, my my uh, trainer came over, and he came over. I said, God, I don't want to work out. I'm on this big rush. I'm playing really good. I said. But I told him, no matter what happens, you know, you have to make me work out. So we worked out, right? And like 35 minutes. I, I made a short workout because because I, I just got back into it two days ago, and I don't want to be super sore. So we worked out for like 35 minutes. I ran for like 20, and we did small weights for like the next 15. And uh, when I was done, I, I mean, I, I, I felt like I was on drugs. I had such an endorphin rush. And I said, yeah, uh, yeah. I said, uh, I said, wow, I feel amazing. And I went back, got on the computer, and... And I won another thirty-eight thousand and played above the rim. I mean, just like I could see through the cards, and I, yeah, I ended up yeah. winning like sixty thousand yesterday, and it was just like the biggest win I had, wow. uh, biggest win Good I had in full tilt forever. But it, you know, it's just real important for me to work out. I mean, all my success last year at the World Series and everything, and it was all when I was working out, and a lot of my depression and bad things that happened the last three, four months is because I haven't been working out. So that's it. Working out is the answer. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. Um, can I ask you one quick question? Sure, I have been on the phone for a while. Good. Um, just a quick question about I'm I'm starting to get into Omaha eight or better, and I had a question for you um, with late game. I guess strategy. I made I made a final table last night, mm -hmm. and I played I played maybe five hands the whole game. I played really tight. Right. And then I think I towards the bubble. I think I tried to you know loosen up a little bit and no. steal blinds. And no. Then it was the no, kind no. of downfall of me? No, it's a total downfall. It's not. It's not hold them. It's not hold right. them. You're at the mercy of the deck. You can't. You, you're not you're not playing no limit uh, 08. If you're playing PLO 08 or no limit 08, then right. you can get aggressive on the bubble. But limit, you're at the mercy of the deck. So uh, yeah, you made a big mistake. Okay. All, All right, right, Mike. Well, uh, I appreciate talking to you. And uh, are you going to be on next week? Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully I'll still be in the tournament down to the last 18 players or something. But if not, I'll okay, be on. Well, I, hope, I hope it goes well, Mike. Thanks, Thanks bud. Later. All right. See you. Bye. Well, I appreciate all the calls today, and uh, probably. Hopefully, I won't see you all next week because I'll be on day five in the main event at the World Poker Tour Championship. But if some way, some way I'm unlucky and I don't make it to day five and I'm not down in the final 27 players, then we'll be having a show next week. Take care. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.